Let's go ahead and take a final look at how to add annotations and dimensionings to our drawings. I'll go ahead and create a new drawing. You can choose any of these drawings that you may need for your design. Right now, I'm going to select B landscape for the ANSI. And I'm going to head, I'm going to go ahead and import the hinge file. You have this as well in our project files. I'll hit OK. I'll choose one of these standard views. I'll come down here and make a different style for one of the projected views that are coming out towards the side. And I'll place one down on the bottom like so. I'll keep that for now. I'm going to go to the view layout and I'm going to add a section view through one of these holes and pull that out to the side. I'll hit OK. As you can see, we have a little annotation there as well. But before we get too carried away providing more views, let's take a look at the bottom down here. This is the title block. This was already provided for us by default. We could go ahead and add additional information if we needed to with this note here. I'll show you a little more in detail in just a second how to use the note. But you can go ahead and click and place this where you need to. We have additional options over here for the text format, the leader style of the note as well. But how do we actually edit some of this sheet format here? We can always right click. Well, once I exit the note first, we can right click and we can go to edit sheet format. And you can see all this becomes highlighted. So we can go ahead and adjust some of this too. And even though this area here looks blank, if I was to go to view and come down to annotation link errors, you see I have all these errors. Currently, it's trying to take the information from the part that we are placing in this drawing and provide you that information, but we haven't updated any information about the hinge. If you want to add information, you can go ahead and go to summary of information here, the object properties and provide that in. But this is for this drawing here. You would have to go to file, open, open up the hinge as a part, and then come up here again to file properties and provide that additional information here. I'll go ahead and go to window, switch over to my sheet. So let's just go ahead and close this out for now. I'll go back to view. I'll take off annotation link errors. I will again right click and edit sheet to exit out of that. Pan back out. Now let's go back to dimensioning some of this. I have all these options here. I can create some center lines by choosing two sides and it drops in a center line for me. I can close that. I can do a whole call out since these are holes that I placed in my dimension or in my design. I can get the specs of those dimensions like so, so I don't have to worry about them. I can go ahead and accept that for now. Provide notes by simply clicking placing and adding the note like so. By default, it attaches to my cursor to place again in other locations if I need it. I'll go ahead and accept that. If you wanted to add a leader that kind of points towards something else, I can select a portion of my design, hit note, and then it places this arrow with it as well. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that for now. We've been smart dimensioning a few of these, just like in our sketches, we can just select various objects or from point to point, and we can drag out and place it down. I'll go ahead and exit out of that as well. We also have the option of auto dimensioning. I'll go ahead and select dimension, select auto dimension, and I will select this selected entities here. I'll go ahead and highlight all these entities here and hit OK. As you can see, SolidWorks will give us every dimension for that one part, but it also makes too many dimensions sometimes. So this can be helpful if your part is very simple or if you want to make sure you do get all the dimensions. But sometimes you'll have to just clean them up, move them around a bit so they don't look as cluttered. I'll go ahead and just hit undo a few times to undo this because for me, it was a bit too cluttered. But all these dimensions we're placing, it's grabbing it from the part itself. We're not going to create new dimensions within our drawing. If we needed to adjust the dimension of something, we would have to go ahead and open the file itself for the part and then make the changes in there. And the drawing would go ahead and auto update for you. We can even place balloons if needed. I can select here, pull it out like so. And let's go ahead and take a quick look at the assembly we have. I'm gonna go ahead and accept this. I'm gonna go to file, open, open up the assembly that we had of the hinge. As you can see, we can move it around. 
I'm going to maybe close this a little bit. Put it into view. Now what I'm going to do is create a drawing from this. I can go to file, make drawing from assembly. I'll go ahead and just keep this for now. I'll hit OK. And I will drag one of these into view, maybe the left one, and place it down over here. Now it doesn't have a great scaling, but I'm going to show you exploded view right now. From this view, we don't really get much detail about what's going on. So when it comes to an assembly, we may want to look at the actual components that are making it up. Well, if we go back to window and go to our assembly, open this up. Under the assembly, we can come to exploded view. Once we select that, all we have to do is select an item and then pull it out. Select another item, pull it out as well. We can hit OK. Come to exploded line sketch just to give some additional information. Maybe click on this part here and this part here. And once I hit enter, it creates a connected line to indicate how the part is assembled back together again in case it's a little too complicated. I can select this portion here, this portion here, and hit enter. And again, it connects so you know how these parts are created and put together. The other thing I can do is maybe put this in a good view so you can see how it goes back together. Keep it like so. Let's go back to our window, go back to assembly sheet, and now I'm going to insert a new layout. Go to view layout, we'll go to projected view. And once I'm in there, it's telling us to please select a drawing from which to project the view. We only have one drawing that we placed in here so far. I'll go ahead and select that. And again, like before, we have the projected views, but we want to see how it looks when it's broken up. We can come down here a bit and we see we have additional options to choose from. And the one we're looking for is this reference configuration. We're going to choose show in exploded state. I'll check that box. As you can see, now I have additional views to look at. I'll maybe place it right there, accept that view. And I can maybe make some adjustments just so everything's in view a little bit better. And now you have a better idea of what this design actually look at, looks like. I can go back to annotation, select balloon, and provide some additional details if needed.